In this new versus series, we take a look at two grades of basketball history as we analyze their skills, achievements, and career totals, ending with a conclusion on who is the greater basketball player overall. Today, our matchup is the big ticket, Kevin Garnett, versus the seven-foot sniper, Dirk Nowitzki. One legend built his legacy as a member of three different franchises, while the other spent the entirety of his career playing for the Mavericks. Starting with the basics, Garnett was listed as a 6'11 power forward who typically weighed around 240 pounds. Nowitzki was a 7-foot power forward who weighed around 245 pounds. We'll compare these two grades with five major categories, which sometimes vary in categories depending on positions and play styles. In this video, for these two all-time great forwards, the categories are scoring, efficiency, rebounding, defense, and accolades. Both of these greats made their mark as elite scorers in the league, as Garnett is in 18th place on the all-time scoring list with over 26,000 points. He has no scoring titles in his career and had a career average of 17.8 points. His career high was 47 points against the Suns in 2005, and he averaged 18.2 points for his career in the playoffs, which ranks him 112th on the all-time list. Now Dirk is in 6th place on the NBA's all-time scoring list with over 31,000 points. He also had no scoring titles and had a career average of 20.7 points. His career high was 53 points against the Rockets in 2004, and he averaged 25.3 points over his career in the playoffs, which ranks him in 15th place on the all-time list. Garnett was a very good ball handler for his 6'11 frame, and he was excellent at creating his own shot. He had a smooth mid-range jump shot that was extremely hard to defend considering his high above the head release point. Garnett always played within the flow of the offense for his team and wasn't the type to try to force any bad shots, as he never averaged more than 20 shot attempts per game. With that being said, his best season scoring the basketball was the 03-04 season, the year which he won the league MVP, and he averaged 24.2 points on the season. During the majority of his prime, he was typically averaging just barely over 20 points per game. Now Dirk, on the other hand, had an even more difficult shot to defend, as the 7-footer consistently utilized his signature fadeaway, which is right up there with Kareem's skyhook as some of the most difficult shots to defend in NBA history. Dirk really slowed down quite a bit as he aged, but especially in his youth, he had a pretty quick first step and was capable of finishing strong on the paint. But obviously, what he was known for more than anything was his elite perimeter shooting, as he was consistently among the league leaders and three-pointers made. With all of these skills and abilities at his disposal, he was frequently among the elite scorers in the NBA. His highest seasonal average was 26.6 points in the 05-06 season, and he had six entire seasons where he averaged more points than Kevin Garnett's best season. I could delve into more aspects, but the truth is, this category isn't all that close, as Nowitzki comfortably takes the scoring comparison. Second up is rebounding, and this is another category that isn't all that close. To put it simply, Dirk was not an elite rebounder. He wasn't known to play the game of basketball very physically, and it certainly wasn't his style to bang on the boards and fight for loose balls. For his career, he averaged just 7.5 rebounds per game. In his 21 seasons, he never once averaged at least 10 rebounds per game, which is pretty stunning considering the amount of minutes he played and considering the fact that he was a 7-foot power forward. Now KG is the complete opposite of that, as he was an elite rebounder who was known for his physical nature around the painted area. For his 21-year career, he averaged 10 rebounds per game, getting as high as 13.9 in 2004. In four straight seasons from 2004 to 2007, he led the league in rebounds per game. That four straight seasons is the third longest streak in NBA history, behind only the streaks of Dennis Rodman and Moses Malone. No need to drive the point any further home, as rebounding clearly goes to Kevin Garnett. Third up is efficiency. Now Kevin Garnett was a strong finisher and trailer in the fast break, but he mixed in plenty of jump shots into his game, and even with that perimeter aspect, he shot nearly 50% for his career at a solid 49.7%. He was also relatively a pretty good free throw shooter for his size, as he shot 78.9% from the free throw line. Now Dirk shot the ball more often than Garnett did, and perimeter shooting was an even more significant part of his game than it was for KG as Dirk shot 47.1% for his career, which is slightly lower than Garnett's career total. But as I've said in past videos, efficiency is a whole lot more than simply field goal percentage. Not only was Dirk among the best three-point shooters in the league, but he was also one of the best free-throw shooters, hitting 87.9% of his attempts over his career. 
In 2006, Dirk had a 50-40-90 season, which less than 10 players have ever done in league history, and Dirk is the only official 7-footer to ever accomplish that feat. True shooting percentage factors in all kinds of shots on the basketball court, and when we look at that advanced stat, the edge is now in Dirk's favor. And when you consider that Dirk shot the ball more and scored more than KG as well, then you begin to see how there's really no way to make a solid argument in favor of KG on this one. Efficiency goes to Dirk Nowitzki. Next up is defense, and this one has the biggest gap of all of the categories. I certainly wouldn't describe Dirk as a bad defender, especially in his early years, as he had the size and length to contest many shots, and he did have some quickness to keep up with the offensive player in front of him. But as he got older, that quickness declined dramatically, and once Dirk was into his 30s, it was very common to see reoccurring blowbys, as he no longer had the lateral speed to challenge the offensive player, and many times, he was the last player to get back on defense after the offensive possession. Garnett, on the other hand, was one of the greatest defensive players of all time. He was a great on-ball defender, he was extremely tenacious, was a solid shot blocker, and had extremely quick hands for a big man, getting more steals than players who typically played the position. You could also argue that his intensity and leadership was contagious on the defensive end for his team, and it was common for him to lead with hustle and heart on that end of the court. He was the league's defensive player of the year in 2008 with the Boston Celtics, and for his career, he made a total of 12 all-defense teams. Dirk, unfortunately, never made a single all-defense team. What is even more impressive for KG is the fact that he was first-team all-defense a total of nine times. That's tied with Michael Jordan, Gary Payton, and Kobe Bryant for the most first-team selections in NBA history. I think you get the point. Garnett authoritatively takes the defensive category. Last on the list of categories is accolades, and both of these legends had plenty of them. Dirk was an NBA champion, the 2011 Finals MVP, and he was the 2007 League MVP. He made 14 All-Star teams and 12 All-NBA teams. In his 21 seasons, he averaged 20.7 points, 7.5 rebounds, 2.4 assists, 0.8 steals, and 0.8 blocks on 57.7 true shooting percentage. Garnett was an NBA champion, and he was the 2004 league MVP. He made 15 All-Star teams, 9 All-NBA teams, and 12 All-Defense teams. He was the 2008 Defensive Player of the Year, and he won 4 rebounding titles. In his 21 seasons, he averaged 17.8 points, 10 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 1.3 steals, and 1.4 blocks on 54.6 true shooting percentage. In terms of efficiency and production, Dirk is clearly the better scorer. But as far as the better overall player, the more accomplished player, and the greater player on the all-time list, those are all titles I give in favor to Kevin Garnett. If Dirk was also an elite defender, then I could certainly argue in his favor. But the big ticket simply impacted the game in way too many ways to overlook. In NBA history, only five players have ever won both the MVP award and the Defensive Player of the Year award during their career. Those players are Akeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, Giannis, Michael Jordan, and you guessed it, Kevin Garnett. To even further emphasize how much of a unique and special all-around talent KG was, consider this stat. In the totality of his career, he has over 25,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, 5,000 assists, 1,500 steals, and 1,500 blocks. Garnett is the only player in NBA history to hit all of these milestones literally no one else. Giannis may get there many years from now, but as of right now, Garnett stands alone. I've said it once and I'll say it again, I think Kevin Garnett is extremely underrated, and should be in the discussion of the greatest power forwards in NBA history, and I believe the only reason he doesn't get brought up more is because he spent almost the entirety of his prime years with a bad Timberwolves franchise that didn't surround him with the talent necessary to consistently compete for championships. By the time he joined Boston, he was already a 13-year veteran who was just exiting the prime of his career. It's interesting how after all these years, Tim Duncan has been clearly elevated to the status of greatest power forward in NBA history, and deservedly so. But when him and KG were both in their primes, much of the NBA community, including myself, saw them as equals in talent. But now, in the modern day, you would be ridiculed just to put Garnett in the same sentence as Duncan. Sometimes, I have to wonder how much of that gap is a product of having one of the greatest coaches of all time and a career filled with Hall of Fame supporting talent. Again, not taking anything away from Duncan or Dirk for that matter, 
I'm just saying that I believe KG was much better than a lot of people realize. Let me know in the comments section who you think was the better player, Garnett or Nowitzki. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.